Shalom. First and foremost, giving all praise, all honor, and all glory to Yahweh, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. And I do so in the name of His only begotten Son, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, real name Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. It's the brother Pagaya Allah Banashar, Sakari Toronto sect. Coming once again with another lesson to the Lord willing, uh, uh, edify the lamb and feed the sheep. All right, and this lesson is. It's going to be on keeping the law, whether or not we're supposed to keep the law, whether or not the scripture says in the last days we're going to be keeping the law and what's going to happen to those who don't, right? One of the first things that you learn when you come to this truth is you got to keep the law, right? But here we have it, 2020, you got brothers bugging out, right? Completely bugging out of their minds, falling out of the truth, you know, as scripture says what happened, now teaching that you don't got to keep the law no more. All right, these are men that are that know that they're Israelites talking about we're not supposed to keep the law anymore, man. Okay, so I'm just gonna examine that and go through the scriptures and, and thoroughly cut it through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. I'm gonna start at Jude because Jude wrote of these guys, man. All right, this is the book of Jude, chapter 1, verse 3. It says, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you. Of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. And that's what we do, man. Right? Brothers, brothers hear of these heresies. You know, Israel always got, you know, its little flavor of the month. Sometimes it's Old, uh, Old Testament only, Negro only. At one point it was Latino only. Right? Israel always got its flavor of the month, topic of the month that they were talking about and that people are bugging out over. This month it happens to be Israelites who know they're Israelites teaching that you don't got to keep the law. So we, so us as as sincere and diligent servants of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai are going to earnestly contend that, man. Okay? It says, um, For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. Right? And then that's, that's the thing, that's the thing that we got to understand that these people were already ordained and predestined and predetermined to fall out and bug out the way that they're doing, man. So we can't marvel and, and be in awe at this. You know, it's expected. It comes with the territory. The longer you're in the truth, the more you're going to see brothers come in and fall right out, man. You know? Um, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness, and denying the only Lord Yahweh and our Lord Yahweh Shem Mashiach, right? And that's what you do. That's what these guys are doing. The grace that was been given to us through the blood, right, of Yahweh Shem Mashiach, they're making it a wicked thing, man. They're making it a, a, a wicked and disgusting thing. Now you can just sin, sin, sin all you want. Sin, of course, we know. All right, First John uh, three and four says, sin is transgression of the law, right? Let's just read this in another um, translation real quick. Let's just check this out. I got it pulled up already, right? In the NLT, I say this because some ungodly people have wormed their way into your churches saying that God's marvelous grace allows us to live immoral lives. The condemnation of such people was recorded long ago. All right. Let's read the Berean Study Bible. For certain men have crept in among, among you unnoticed, ungodly ones, who were designated long ago for, the, for condemnation. They turned the grace of our Lord, of our God, into a license for immorality. Right? So this is what they do, man. This is what these guys are basically teaching, that the grace that we receive now means that we can just go on and, and not keep the laws of God, man. Right? Look at this scripture right here. Uh, Ecclesiasticus. All right, this is the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 15, verse 20. He hath commanded no man to do wickedly, neither hath he given any man license to sin. The Lord never gave us a, a, a license to sin. He never said, okay, right, just go ahead and just don't keep my law. The whole of scriptures is about keeping the law and the faith, man. We read that all throughout the scriptures. All right. Let me get this scripture. All 
Right? This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 6, verse 23. For the commandment is a lamp, and, a, and the law is light, and reproofs of instruction are the way of life. Right? So these guys have, right? We're about to get that precept too. These brothers have no light in them. If you're not keeping the law, there's no light in you. There's nothing guiding you in, 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 in how you should act while, while going throughout the world, man. Okay? Let's just go right to it. Right? This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 8, verse 20. To the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. So there's no light in you. You're not teaching. You're not. You're, the words that are coming out of your mouth aren't filtered by the law and the testimony. There is no light in you, man. Okay? We're just going to be hitting these precepts. All right? This is the book of Psalm 119 and 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is truth. Right? There's no truth in them, like we just read. There's no light in them. There's no truth in them. All right? They're not coming out of the scriptures, man. And you'll see that these guys just love to twist Paul's writings. That's all. The, they've literally turned into Christians that know that they're Israelites, meaning that all they'll do is twist the writings of Paul. You know? Right, this is the book of St. John chapter 3 verse 19 And this is the condemnation That light is come into the world And men love darkness rather than light Because their deeds were evil For everyone that doeth evil Hateth the light Neither cometh to the light Lest his deeds should be reproved But he that doeth come to the light that his deeds may be uh, select. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in the, in the Most High. Right? So let's just analyze these scriptures real closely and real slowly with the scriptures that we just read, right? The scripture said that the law is the light, right? So it says, and this is the condemna condemnation that light is coming to the world. And men love darkness rather than light. So, right? So these men, they, they, they'd rather be lawless than have the, that law, that light. Right? Because their deeds were evil. Right? Because if you're not keeping the law, you're not keeping the acts or the deeds of the law, you're doing wickedness. You're doing evil. Right? For everyone that doeth evil, right? How do you do evil? By not keeping the law. Right? Hateth the light. So those who do evil and don't keep the law, they hate the light. They hate the law. Right? Neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. And what did we just read? Right? In Proverbs, it says that reproofs of instruction are the way of life. Right? Through what? Through the law. But he that doeth, doeth truth, how do you do truth? Right? How, how do you do truth? The scripture says that the, thy law is truth, man. As a matter of fact, let's get that. Right? Oh, we just read that. Salakia. Let's just get it. Let's just hit it again. Let's just hit it again, right? Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is truth. So how do you do truth? All right, let's go back to it. All right? But he that doeth truth come to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in the Most High. Right? So showing you, man. You got to keep this law. And if you don't keep this law, it's because you're doing wicked things and you don't want to be reproved for those wicked things, man. Right? This is the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 5. For this ye know that no whoremonger, right, which is in the law, nor unclean person in the law, nor covetous man in the law, who is an idolater in the law, Hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Hamashiach and the Most High? So if you are breaking these laws that are just that were just listed, because you can find these things in the Mosaic Law, you're not going to inherit the kingdom, right? 
Let no man deceive you with vain words, which is what these guys are coming with. Vain words, twisting the, the, the scriptures, twisting the letters of Paul to suit their, their, their doctrine, right? Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of the Most High upon the children of disobedience. Disobedient to what? Exactly. What are we what 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 is the wrath coming on the children of disobedience? What are they disobedient to? Right? The scriptures talk about us being uh, the wrath of the Lord coming upon our people because of disobedience to his law. But here you have it, these niggas are talking about you don't gotta keep the law. But Paul's talking about wrath coming on those who are disobedient. Right? Verse 7. Be not ye therefore partakers with them, right? Don't don't right leave them alone, man. Watch, watch that whole council is going to come to naught because it's not of man. I mean, Aslaki, it is of man and not of the Most High. Right? For ye were sometimes uh, darkness, but now are ye a light in the, in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and in truth, proving what is acceptable unto Yahweh. Right? So we're going to analyze these things. Right, what what the fruit of the spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. So we're gonna add and analyze these words and see how they, they, they relate to the law according to scriptures. Right? So the book of Romans chapter twelve verse two. Right? And be not conformed to this world. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of the Most High. Right? These words we're also going to analyze. Right? So let's go. Let's see. Let's deal with the will first. First and foremost, the will of God. Right? This book of Psalm, chapter forty, verse eight. I delight to do Thy will. O oh, my power, yea, thy law is within my heart. So the will of the Lord is that you have the law of God, his law, within your heart. That's his will, right? Let's go. Titus, chapter 3, verse 8. Right? This is a faithful saying, and these things I will that thou affirm constantly, that they which have believed in the Most High might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men. Right? Talk, see, these brothers talk about, oh, it's all about the faith. We're not denying the faith. But you can't deny the good works either, the works. Okay? Um, let's see, good works. Let's see what's good, what, what, what are good works. Let's see. According to the scriptures. Right? Let every man be a liar. Let the most high be true. This is Proverbs chapter 4 verse 2. For I give you good doctrine. Forsake ye not my law. So that's good doctrine. The law of the most high. Right? Let's go back to the, to, to, to the scriptures of Paul. Because we love Paul, man. Don't get it twisted. You guys just don't know how to read his writings properly, man. Right? This is Romans chapter 7 verse 12. It says, Wherefore the law is holy and the commandment holy. And just and good. So so the scriptures, Paul himself is saying that the law is holy, that the law is good. Right? So so where are you guys coming out that, that we're we're denying Yahweh Shai because we keep the law and teach to keep the law? Right? First Timothy chapter one verse eighteen or verse eight, Salakia. Right? But we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully. So here we have, it's being said that the law is good. Right? Get more, because we can do this all day, man. Book of Psalm, chapter 19, verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of Yahweh is sure, making the wise simple. Right, so here we have it. Right, we read Ephesians and we read Romans, and it said, right, to ha to have a, a righteousness and a truth and, and good and acceptable and perfect will of the Most High. And we went through the scriptures and showed every single one of those words 
being attributed to the law. Okay. So let's just get some let's get some 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 prophecies, prophecy, man, some prophetic love to see if according to the Lord, right? And and the visions and the prophecies that he gave to his prophets if we're gonna, we're gonna be keeping the law in the last day, or we're supposed to be keeping the laws in the last day, right? Starting off at Isaiah sixty-six and fifteen, it says, "For behold, Yahweh will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire." This hasn't happened yet. Nobody can say that this has happened, right? Even even you bugged out Christian Israelites. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. They that sanctify themselves, sounds familiar, and purify themselves, right, in the garden behind one tree in the midst, eating swine's flesh, and the abomination and the mouth shall be consumed together, saith Yahweh. Right, so if you're breaking the Levitical law, the dietary law, Leviticus 11, you're going to be destroyed, you're going to be consumed by the Lord. So how is it that you're telling me that we don't got to keep the law anymore? Right? Let's get some apocryphal love, man. Right? Second Ezra's 9. I'm going to start at 7. And everyone that shall be saved. Right? The scripture says, he, he who endure to the end, the same shall be saved. So we're talking about end times right here. Everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works... Right, and by faith, right, because we do not negate the faith, right? We couple faith with works because without each other, they're dead being alone, as it is written by, 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 by St. James, man. Right, whereby, whereby ye have believed shall be preserved from the said perils, right? So the people who, who escape by their works and by their faiths shall be preserved from the said perils written of in, in, in the book of Ezra's. And shall see my salvation in my land and within my borders, for I have sanctified them from the beginning. Right? Just like the people who have been sanctified to bug out from the beginning. Those who are going to keep the, the works and the faith have been sanctified from the beginning. Right? Verse 9. Then shall they be in a pitiful case, which now have abused my ways, and that ha they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torments. For such as... As in their life have not re have received benefits and have not known me, and they that have loathed my law, which is usually this gets brought out on these Christians, man. Now I gotta bring this out on you, you brothers that are Israelites that taught the law that, that were on the highways and byways. Now you're bugging out talking about we don't gotta keep the law. Now this is talking about you. They that have loathed my law, while they have yet liberty. And when as yet place of repentance was open unto them, which is what we have now, that's what grace is. The opportunity to, be, to repent and turn back to the Lord. That's what grace is, man. Not a license to sin like you, you, like you niggas are making it, man. Alright? And when, yet, uh, when as yet place of repentance was open unto them, understood it not, but despised it. The same must know it after death by pain. And that's when you're gonna know. That's when you're gonna realize, man. You you were the one that the scriptures talk about that was gonna be that was foreordained to be destroyed, a vessel of wrath, right? A vessel uh, uh, fitted for destruction, man. Okay, that's when you're gonna know. All right. Now let's go to let's go to Yahweh Shai, man, because these guys talk about I, I'm in Christ. I'm in Christ. I don't gotta keep the law. I'm in Christ, right? Let's see what Yahweh Shai prophesied, man. All right, this this scripture is actually the one that inspired this lesson, man. Right, as I was reading it, I realized Yahweh Shai is cutting these niggas, man. All right, this is the book of Matthew, chapter thirteen, verse thirty-six. Then Yahweh Shai, then Yahweh Shai sent the multitude away and went into the house, and his disciples came unto him, saying, "Declare unto us the parable of the tares in the field, of the field." All right, so he's gonna break down all the, the parables that he gave out. Right, that that the the rest of the people couldn't understand. He's gonna give his disciples a breakdown. Right, verse thirty-seven. He answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. Verse thirty-nine. 
the enemy that sold them is the devil. This is the key point. The harvest is the end of the world. And the reapers are the angels. The, the harvest being the end of the world is the, is the key point. So this is end times, right? Verse 40. As therefore, as therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. Verse 41. The Son of Man shall send forth His angels, and they shall gather out of His kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity. So according to Yahweh Shai, in the end of the world, the angels are going to gather up all them that offend and those which do iniquity, right? And shall be cast and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Basically, you're going to be destroyed, man. If you're offending and you're doing iniquity, you're going to be destroyed. Let's go into these words real quick, right? All things. Let me see this. So this word here, that, that is the word for things, right? Individually, each, every, any, all, everyone, all. So, and it's used mostly for the word all. See that? 715 times all. Things, 145 times. Right? So really, this should say, The Son of Man shall send forth His angels, and they shall gather out of His kingdom all, because that word should be all, so it should just say all, all that offend and them which do iniquity. Let's see what this word offend means. Right? G4625. Scandalon. Right? A snare. Let's see. A movable stick or of a trap. A trap stick. Any impediment placed in the way. Causing one to stumble or fall. Right? Apply to, to Yahweh Shai. His person and career. Uh, any person or thing by one is entrapped, drawn into error or sin. Sin, right? Transgression of the law. Right? You see, iniquity. Right? The condition, right? It's the word uh, uh, G458. An anomia, right? Illegality. That is violation of law or generally wickedness. Right? The condition of without law, so being lawless, like these, like these, like these brothers, these niggas are teaching, right? Because of ign because ignorant of it, because of violating it, contempt and violation of law, iniquity and wickedness. Let's go to the the, the root word, right? Anomos, right? G four five nine, right? Look at that, destitute of the Mosaic law. Departing from the law, a violator of the law, lawless, wicked. Okay? So it says, The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity, all those that sin, and all of those that are without the law, the Mosaic law, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. So if you're not keeping the law, according to Yahweh Shai, you're going to be destroyed, man, in the last days if you're not keeping the laws of God, the Mosaic law, right? So, so you brothers that talk about I'm in Christ, I'm in Christ. Christ said that if you don't keep that law in the last day, you're going to get thrown into the furnace of fire. All right. Uh, let's just take a look at this scripture in another translation real quick too, All right? Got it pulled up. All right, Matthew 13 and 41. It says, <laughs> look, at, look at the ESV. The Son of Man will send His angels and they will gather out of His kingdom all causes of sin and all lawbreakers. Alright, Berean Study Bible. The Son of Man will send out His angels and they will weed out of His kingdom every cause of sin and all who practice lawlessness. Alright, keep saying it. All those who practice lawlessness. All who commit lawlessness. Practice lawlessness. Alright. See that? All about lawlessness. Okay? So what makes you think, you know, that you're going to be able to just be out here sinning in the last days and not be destroyed when Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, the, the man who you claim to be in, right? I'm in Christ, I'm in Christ. He said you're going to be destroyed if you're practicing lawlessness. Right? Alright, so you, 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 get, you niggas need to repent. 
All right? And come back to, to, to this truth, man. All right? But with that, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai, and Shalom.